welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. And today we are going to be flipping this dresser. So I got this dresser for free from my boyfriend's friend. They were just getting rid of it. And so they knew I was flipping furniture and they gave it straight to me. So first things first, you guys, you wanna take all of the hardware off. Um, it makes it really hard to do anything if the hardware is not off. I'm pretty sure these dressers are not in the right place. I'm pretty sure this needs to be here, so we'll fix that, but that doesn't matter right now. So we're going to pull these drawers out. I've got my impact drill right here, and we're going to start taking the hardware out. One down, I have to go. Okay, so I ended up just taking this drawer out. It was giving me a lot of trouble and I realized it's because there is no drawer slide. So that is something that we will have to replace. It's actually a pretty easy fix. The first time I did it, I had no idea what I was doing, but now it's pretty easy and I'll have to show you guys that since we need a drawer slide. Also, um, make sure you keep all your hardware together. Sometimes I do like to reuse this. Now this hardware is pretty outdated, so I don't think I'm gonna use it on this dresser again, but I may be able to somehow use it for another project. So I am going to keep it. I just keep all my hardware in this little bucket right here. And if I ever need it, I go back. So all the hardware is off and oh my gosh, this hardware was hard to get off. There were so many pieces with it. So, for the time being, I am just gonna put this drawer slide back in. And you can tell that it does not slide easy. You see that? There's nothing to slide onto. But all the hardware is off, so now we are gonna clean. I've already got my water right here. And I just use a soap and water mixture. I use Dawn dish soap because it really helps with getting and cutting the grease. Whenever you're getting a piece, you always wanna make sure that you are cleaning because a lot of the time you don't know where it came from. You don't know what people were doing with this. So it's always a good idea to clean. So I just have an old rag and we're gonna start cleaning it up. It is all clean. You can come look at this water. I'm surprised it is not that dirty. That's always a good sign. However, if it is super dirty, I would actually empty out this bucket and go back through it again. But right now we don't have to worry about that. It's not terrible. All right, you guys, so for this part, you will need one of these and some wood filler. You won't need this on every project, but some of the time when there are chips, you want to be able to fill them up. Now, this is a pretty good piece. There aren't many chips, but what there is, is this design. It's here and on that side and then down here as well. I think that's kind of outdated and I don't want that on my piece. So just easily by taking this and some wood filler, you can clean it up. A lot of the time, just using your fingers is way better. I mean, it's not, 
You're not typically supposed to do that, but a lot of people do just because of this material. And it's just easier. All right, one side good enough. Now we'll do the bottom. And this stuff will come off even if it dries on your hands, so don't worry about that. Here, you guys. Alright, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Um, so now we are just kind of in a waiting process. We have to wait for this stuff to dry before we can sand. But sanding is our next step. So, get back to you guys once this is all dry. All right, you guys, so we are back a couple hours later. The wood filler is all dry, so now we gotta take it outside and smooth it all down. We are just gonna be doing a light scuff sand because we don't wanna get this down to bare wood. So let's get it outside and start sanding. So I did decide to do an 80 grit just to kinda get this top off, and I also have to really work on that wood filler down there. So I am doing a 180 or an 80 and then I'll go back with 120 um, to smooth everything out. But yeah, for that we're going to do the 80. Also I forgot to mention guys, make sure that you're wearing some type of glassware to protect your eyes. <laughs> We got the door slides out here now, so we're gonna do the same exact thing with these. By the way guys, as I'm sanding, I forgot to mention that I did end up filling the um, hardware holes because I do plan on switching those out, so thought I'd let you guys know that. So a mistake that I made that I just realized, you guys, is you don't literally want to fill it all the way over like I did here because it's just that much more sanding. I mean, sanding this little part took way longer than if I would have just filled in the creases instead of filling it on top. So that is something that I just learned and I want to help you guys prevent from doing if you're using wood filler too. So yeah, make sure you do that. Otherwise, you're gonna I'm going to be sanding this for about five minutes maybe more especially the dresser too so yeah okay so you can see here that the design is still showing but the creases are filled so I just fixed that screw up now we got our 120 grit paper on and we're gonna smooth everything out and wipe everything off so let's go So now while I'm outside, I'm gonna go grab the shop vac. I find that it's a little bit better to blow most of the dust away and then I will grab a microfiber towel and just kind of wipe the rest of the sand and debris off. trying to beat the rain but we did get rained out so we're moving the rest back in here I did get most of the sand off and all the dust off but there is a little bit left so I'm going back with my microfiber towel in here it's not my favorite thing to do it inside this room I like to take this part outside but because it's raining we can't and I want to get this part finished so I'll just have to make sure to clean up really well afterwards before we get wet paint on these all right let's go Oh, that extra 
extra sand on the side there. Make sure you move around your towel so that you're not just wiping the sand all around. Make sure you're really like getting around the creases because the dust does like to stay in there. Alright, I'm going to do the other two drawers and then we'll get on to the next step. Alright you guys, it is now the next day and we are going to start priming. I do have the Zinner primer, it is water based. Um, this is the only primer I've used on all my projects and actually this is the first can too. My first time that I'm going to be rolling on primer, usually I use a brush, but we're going to try out the roller for the first time. So we're going to pour some in here. I'd rather pour less and pour more in later, especially because we are so low on primer. Roller is now wet and I'm kind of nervous to do this because I haven't done it before, but we're going to try it out. I am not very advanced with rolling, so we'll see how it turns out. Now when applying anything, like paint, primer, or even the sealer, you want to make sure you are going to do long strokes, especially at the end, just to avoid brush marks. Also you guys, it is a good idea to go with the grain. Um, this is an all wood, real wood dresser here, so I'm making sure it's specially to go with the green. Um, and then like you saw right there, that end stroke, I just did all the way through to avoid the brush mark. Now if you guys are doing a lighter color on top of this primer, I would probably prime twice, especially if you have um, a darker dresser color, so the wood. Um, but because we are going to be doing navy blue for this, I'm only going to do one coat of it because I know the dark will easily cover the light. Alright, so I did catch before it got to be too late. I forgot to put the little like triangle pyramids underneath, but that just helps when you reach the bottom so you're not painting the floor and you're not picking stuff up from the floor and putting it into your paint. So good thing I caught that early, but now we can get back to work. good with priming. Um, now we just kind of have to wait for this to dry and then we will get back to painting. Um, if you put a fan on, it'll make it dry quicker. So that's what we're going to do. The primer is all dried and I really do love um, priming with the roller. That was my very first time and I noticed that he used a lot less paint. There was a lot less paint left over. And I definitely think that I'm going to be doing it some more because it was much faster as well. For this project, we will be using the Jolie paint. This is the second time that I've used this and I absolutely love this brand. We are going to be doing it in the matte finish classic navy. So the goal here, you guys, is to do the navy with gold hardware. Anytime before you guys are opening up a new can of paint or any paint, you want to make sure you shake it. And this is a brand new can, so I'm going to make sure I shake it super well, and then the paint will be ready to go. But beforehand, guys, we do want to do a light scuff sand just to make sure that the paint has dried smoothly and that everything is feeling great with no bumps, so we're going to do that first. So we're going to start light sanding. This is a super, super high grit and the higher the better because it's not like it's not rough at all so this is perfect for just doing a scuff sand all right 
So you aren't trying to actually get this off, um, which is why you're using such a high grit. You do want to make sure that you keep everything on. It's just to smoothen things out and it's super smooth now. So I'm going to go grab a towel to be able to wipe this dust off and then we can start painting. So you can use a microfiber towel. I think most people do, but I'm just using paper towel. All right, everything's off. We're gonna put that to the floor and we're gonna get paint. So as I've mentioned before, I like to have the red Solo cups. I mean, you don't have to have literally a Solo cup, but a container is good so that you aren't um, getting debris or anything that might be around your piece in your paint. Um, instead, you'll just be getting it in the container and you can just throw the can container away instead of having to throw away your expensive paint. So I'm just opening this up for the first time. I think there's a seal, I don't even know. When I used Jolie paint the last time, it was just a sample, so it didn't have this. This is gonna give me trouble. There we go, okay. Give it a shake again. Now we're gonna open it up and actually see the color for the first time. And I'm just using a screwdriver to open this up. A lot of people do have, um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's like 40 cents, those paint, or the paint openers. But this works just as good. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. All right guys, do you see that pretty color? And then I just kind of use the paint brush to wipe the excess off. Very nice, very nice. You're gonna get paint on your hands, guys. You just, you gotta deal with it. It's, it is what it is. I only did pour a little bit. So you can always pour more if you need to, but I'd rather not waste this paint because it is a little bit expensive. Um, also, it is pretty thick, so I like to add water to it. Um, not everyone does that. I just poured some water. A lot of people do have misters. That is something that I do want to get. Um, I don't really have a measurement. I just kind of, I'm just kind of go with the flow. So I'm just going to use the back of this brush and I'll wash it off. All right, so it's not too thick and it's not too thin either. That's, ooh. Perfect consistency. I'll make sure to wipe that off. We're gonna get everything off the surface. All right. For the first time with this color, let's go. dresser and I did a light sand just to even everything out so we are now ready to paint all the drawers. And you do want to be careful because some people line theirs. I'm usually pretty careful because I use a hand brush and um, yeah just be super careful not to get paint anywhere you don't want it. 
got the dresser done, that's drying, and I just finished the drawers. So now, since I have extra paint, I'm just gonna put some plastic wrap around here to keep this from drying out. And then I'm gonna put this in a baggie to keep this from drying out so I don't have to wash this or waste the paint. But we'll be back once this paint dries. So the first coat of paint is now dry, so we're gonna do the same thing we did with the primer and we're gonna do a light sand just to get rid of any unevenness, any bumps. So we're gonna start off with that first. All right, so we did a very light sanding and now we're just gonna go back with the towel again get all the dust off there. You do not want that in your paint. So now we are going to do the same exact thing. We're just gonna paint it again. Make sure if you guys are getting new paint to put a little bit of water in there. I find that this is especially helpful on the second coat just because there's already a layer of paint, so. We're gonna do the same thing over again a second time and hopefully we will have full coverage. So now that second coat is dry, we are going to start with the top coat. I like to use the polycrylic top coat. It's water-based from Minwax. So what I do for this is I take the polycrylic and I put it in a container and then instead of adding water like we do for the paint, I actually add a little bit of paint so that it's not just the polycrylic. It does have the paint in there. That just helps when you apply this and it's not so cloudy because you have a little bit of the color in there so it helps a lot. So instead of using a paintbrush, I am going to be using a foam brush. I just find that it's easier to apply it and it's less streaky. I do think that this top coat is kind of hard to put on. The first few times I did it, I kind of screwed up and I had to start over. Um, I'm kind of getting the hang of it now. So we're going to start doing the top coat on the dresser. I did a little test. Go slow and do very light. Just go very light with this. see here you got to be super careful because this stuff clumps and when it does clump you'll be able to see it so like all in here you see kind of the clumps there the clumps there you really got to make sure you work it in because if you don't it will be noticeable so that's the only hard thing about top coat you just want to take it slow and be super easy be super slow and just take Take your time. If you're gonna rush anything, this is the last thing that you should rush. The drawers always seem to be the time when all like the stuff floating in the air likes to fall into my piece. And then you can see it right on top, so be careful and keep an eye out for that stuff. You can pick it out. Um, you can pick it out pretty easily if it's still wet, but this stuff dries super quick. So you gotta be super fast with pretty much every move you make while applying the top coat.
We did get the new hardware holes in. We thought that would be smart to do before putting the top coat on. I think in the next project, that's going to be the very first thing that we do because I don't want to have to go back and forth with painting like if I screw up a hole. So I think that is going to be the very first thing I do in the next step instead of having to worry about screwing something up when my piece is almost finished. So we did get the hardware in and we also did get the drawer slide in. I know, I'm sorry, I forgot to film that part, but I know there will be many other projects that I will be able to show you how to do that. So. The next step is going to be actually putting the hardware on and staging to get it onto Marketplace. So we're going to wait until this dries and then we're going to do those final steps and this project will be done. We are now on my favorite step and that is putting the hardware on. I think this is one of the easiest steps and it's kind of, you can really personalize and finish the whole piece with this step. So. This is the hardware that we are going to be doing for this dresser. It's just gonna be a long knob, it's gonna look like that. It's gonna look pretty. And then the top, because it does have this weird lining right here, um, we are going to be doing the more circular knobs. I already have one on, so there's a sneak peek, but this is super easy. and it's good to go. Top drawer done, we're gonna hurry. Just be careful, this is like the scariest part for me. I hate finishing everything and then scratching things up. this next one in I will show you guys what this looks like all right look at that look how pretty that is all right so this is how it's looking so far I'm really loving the gold hardware with the navy blue I do have two more hardware pieces to put in. I'm gonna do that, and the next clip that you're gonna see is us getting ready to stage. Hey guys, so we do have it up against our staging wall. I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but I had this white set. It had like the stained top and the body painted white over here. And it's not here, not only because we needed this wall to stage this piece, but because we sold it today. So I set it up on Facebook Marketplace less than a day ago. It was less than a day ago, I know that for sure. And I got so many people that were interested in it that it sold for full asking price of $650, you guys. And I got that set for $50. So I'm so happy about that. That is by far the most profit that I have made but I now know kind of what my area is looking for, so I definitely know to make more pieces like that. But anyways, let's stop rambling. I do have this piece right here now. This is the staging wall. This is where I post all my pictures for Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I do have a few pieces right here. Uh, I did, you have seen this in my other video. I showed it in my workshop video but I use a lot of the same stuff to stage every time. So let's get to staging, guys. So you want to stage very simple. You don't want to overwhelm the area, but I like to have just simple things, small little things. And I don't want to keep this off long because the paint, the, although the paint is dry, there is like a cure time. So I try to keep this on as, little as possible. So, let's see. 
how that looks. Okay, I think that looks really good. So that's really all that I do for staging. And then I just take a whole bunch of pictures. I make sure to take one picture without all of the decor so that it's just the piece. And then the rest of the pictures will have the decor because people do like to see. They like to look at your piece and be able to imagine it in their home. And putting this decor on there is just a little bit of an extra step to be able to show them how they could decorate it in their home. So really that's all that I do guys. Um, I will insert some pictures here to show you kind of what pictures I did put on the marketplace so you can see kind of the angles that I'm going for and what I thought would be important to include in the pictures. But otherwise you guys, this is going to be the end of the video. This is our very first start to finish, trash to treasure. And I'm so excited to be able to show more things with you guys. I think in one of the upcoming, in one of the upcoming videos, I will be staining on the top of a dresser. So you guys will be able to see that. And I'm so excited to get this up on Marketplace and I'm either going to sell it for around $250 to $300. I did get this for free, maybe spent $30 bucks in materials, so that would be a pretty good profit. If you guys like what you see here and you want to see more content like this, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel so much and it helps me be able to take the time to do this type of content and film videos for you guys. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.